In this video, we discuss over 20 new features in macOS Mojave. This video is sponsored by our friends over at MacPaul, who produce Clean My Mac 10, a great way to clean up, protect, and speed up your Mac with just a few clicks. Click the link down below in the description to visit cleanmymac.com for a free download. Special thanks to MacPaul for sponsoring this video. Dark mode is the flagship feature for this year's macOS update. You'll find the settings under System Preferences General. Right there at the top, you'll see Appearance, Light and Dark. Now, the benefit of having dark mode goes beyond pure aesthetics. It really does help your eyes when you're working in dimly lit environments. And a lot of different apps, most of the default apps under macOS are influenced by the dark mode setting. So when you switch over to dark mode, you're gonna notice apps like the Finder or your Mail app or the Messages app or Calendar, they're all influenced by the dark setting. Here you can see the Finder and you can see Safari and you see the Mail app, the Messages app, Calendar app, etc. And there's lots more apps that are influenced by the dark mode setting and third party apps are also eligible to incorporate dark mode support as well. It both looks good and it can help your eyes in dark environments. The next feature is dynamic desktop. And this sort of goes right along hand in hand with dark mode. You can find its settings in the desktop and screensaver section of system preferences. And what dynamic desktop will do is it will automatically change the picture on your desktop, the wallpaper throughout the day based on your location or based on the time in your specific location. So there are two in this example here. You have the Mojave Desert and you also have the Solar Gradient. So for starters, I'm going to select the Mojave wallpaper and I'm going to simulate a time change in my location by going to the date and time preferences and basically manually adjusting the time just so you can see how the wallpaper changes based on your time at your particular location. So here, you can see how it's changing and this will happen dynamically as the time moves forward in your location. I don't know about you guys, but I think that's pretty cool. Thumbs up if you agree with me on that one. Now we're going to choose the solar gradients and do the same thing. And you can see how the wallpaper changes based on time. So early in the morning, it's light. And as the day goes on, the wallpaper gets darker. Really cool. In macOS Mojave, you'll find six new accent colors under the general section of preferences. Now, the blue and graphite colors have always been options, and these colors influence accents around macOS, such as little drop down buttons there, the little arrow buttons or radio buttons, or just plain buttons on menus. You can see all the new colors there. You get purple, pink, red, orange, yellow, and green. Now, if you know me, you know I've always struck, well, you can see it for yourself. I've always struggled to maintain a clean desktop, but thankfully in Mojave, there's a new feature called Stacks. And this allows you to clean up your desktop in just a couple of clicks like that. Stacks is an organizational feature built exclusively for the desktop. And you can easily undo your stacks just by right clicking on the desktop and unchecking you stacks, everything goes back to how it was. But obviously that's a bad thing in my case here. So I'm gonna select use stacks and what's really cool about stacks is that you can organize them by kind or by date or by tags. And you can see how they're grouped here by kind. And I can even scroll through those stacks using my scroll on my magic mouse to find the exact file I'm looking for. But not just that, you can obviously click on it to ex expand that stack and then access all the contents within that stack. Needless to say, at least for me, this is a very handy organizational feature to have. Of course, you can expand other types like music access those, expand movies, screenshots, etc. But again, you have the option of grouping those stacks, not just by kind, but you can group by date, last open, add it, modified, create it. You can also group by tags as well. So here I grouped by date created, and you can see they're all grouped by date created. But I personally like the grouping by kind. That just works with my brain a lot better. So what do you guys think about stacks? Let me know down below in the comments. In macOS Mojave 10.14, the Finder gets several new improvements, starting with this, the new gallery view, uh, sort of like that old cover flow view, except better. Um, I, I hate it, cover flow, to be honest. This one is actually really nice because you get that really large preview of whatever you're looking at. So great for, I don't know, groups of images. But that isn't where the improvements to the Finder end. Now, Finder also has quick actions. 
And these handy little shortcuts live up to their name by allowing you to quickly take action on files directly from the Finder interface. So I can, for instance, rotate an image or mark up an image or PDF and you can use quick actions to create a PDF from an image or a group of images. Yes, you can actually apply quick actions to multiple items selected in the Finder at the same time. Really cool. And the last Finder enhancement that we'll discuss today is complete metadata present right within the Finder interface. As you can see there, very handy to have that. And you can customize what is displayed by going to the preview options there. So this can speed up your workflow by allowing you to view metadata as soon as you preview a file in Finder. And new quick look enhancements allow you to perform actions on files using the buttons in the upper right hand corner of the quick look interface. So I can do things like rotate or invoke markup. And I can do all this prior to me actually opening the file in a supported application. So within this quick look preview, which is accessible by pressing the space bar while highlighting a file in the finder, you have access to all the markup tools. So you can add shapes to an image, for instance, you can rotate, you can add text. And when you're done, just click done. And then you can open the file with a supported app, or you can use the share button to share. I'm going to use airdrop in this case and share with my iPhone. Another one of the major enhancements in macOS Mojave is the presence of a new screenshot utility. And it features a graphical user interface for capturing the entire screen, a selected window, or a selected portion. But not just that, screen recording is integrated within the screenshot utility. And there's options such as where to save your screenshots, a timer, and more. So let me walk through how to use the new screenshot utility. So I have capture entire screen selected. Just click on the screen like that or click the capture button and you'll see this new floating screenshot. Yeah, just like on iOS, you can instantly start marking up that screenshot. You can even share it directly from that preview interface. But in this example, I'm just gonna click done and it's gonna save that screenshot directly to my default save location, which is my desktop with markup in tow. And you can also use a keyboard shortcut, Command Shift 5 to bring up the screenshot utility to capture a new screenshot. So in this case, I'm going to capture a portion of the screen. So I'll capture this little rock formation here. And you can see how the interface elegantly fades out of the way when I'm moving the screenshot borders. Super nice. Now I'll capture. And now instead of clicking on that preview thumbnail, I'm just gonna let it fade out and save automatically to the desktop. So you have the option of doing either. And remember, if you're a power user, you can still use Command Shift 1 through 4 to capture your screen. So don't worry about that. Now let's try screen recording. So I have my location set up. I'm going to show mouse clicks this time, and then I'm just going to click on record and start a screen recording. So now my screen is being recorded. And again, this is all incorporated within the screenshot utility. So you can record your screen or create screenshots. And once you're done recording, just click the stop button. It'll do just like it did previously. You can click on that preview thumbnail. And here you have the quick look interface that allows you to do things like trim that video. So I can do that just like that. It's super handy. And then I'll click done and it'll save that screen recording directly to the desktop. And I can preview it just like that and you can see your mouse clicks. Pretty cool. Continuity camera takes some of the inefficiency out of the workflow of taking photos with your phone to be shared with your Mac. So you just right click on your desktop, select import from iPhone or iPad, select your device, and then you'll see the camera app automatically launch on your selected iPhone or iPad. And now you just take a photo. So we'll do that right now. Let's compose it a little bit. All right, so there we go, there's our photo. And once we're satisfied with that photo, just tap use photo, and that is automatically transferred to your Mac. And this works for both photos and scans. So a super handy and convenient new feature in macOS Mojave. Now in Mojave, Apple has added four previously iOS exclusive apps to the Mac. And this gives us a preview of a tool set that will allow developers to target both iOS and macOS platforms. So the first app that we're looking at is obviously none other than Apple News. And the really cool thing about this is that all of your subscriptions and everything from your iPhone or iPad carry over to your Mac. And it's basically a seamless reading experience between the Mac and iOS platforms thanks to iCloud. So you can start reading on one device and pick up where you left off on the other.
The next iOS-centric app to be found on the Mac is the Stocks app. And like the iOS version, the Stocks app, obviously you have your ticker and all that information there, but you now get Apple News incorporated directly within each individual stock. So for instance, Tesla will give you all the information, all the news on Tesla and so on. A very handy update to the Stocks app. And again, all your information syncs over thanks to iCloud which makes for a relatively seamless experience when switching between devices. Now, my favorite new app to come over from iOS is the Home app. And that is because now, finally, you can natively control HomeKit devices from your Mac. So that means I can turn lights on or off. I can lock doors and unlock doors. Uh, you can even go in and adjust settings within the Home app on the Mac. Not only that though, you now get Siri control thanks to HomeKit integration on Mac OS Mojave. So you can use Siri on your Mac to turn your lights on or turn your lights off for instance. Super handy. And the last app to come over from iOS is Voice Memos. And Voice Memos got a drastic upgrade on iOS as well. It now has iCloud support, so all of your voice memos will sync. So if I create a new memo on my Mac, it will appear on my iPhone. If I create a new memo on my iPhone, it will appear on my Mac. And the interface also got a little upgrade with the iOS version, and that interface has carried over to the Mac version. Similar to how you have recent apps in your dock on the iPad, you can now have a similar recent app experience on Mac OS. So watch what happens when I open up a few apps. Those appear in this little recent area. Notice when I quit, that app stays there. So I'm going to open up another application. Let's open up Airmail. How about that? And we'll close that out. You can see it stays there in the recent section. So three apps can stay in the recent section at any given time and they will swap out based on usage. Now, I know a lot of people are really particular about their dock. They don't want things there that they haven't placed there or haven't explicitly opened. If that describes you, don't worry about it. You can always open system preferences and go to dock and then toggle the show recent applications in dock option. It's that simple. On previous versions of Mac OS, the Mac App Store was getting a little long in the tooth, but now with the Mac OS Mojave, it is drastically updated and enhanced really to accentuate apps, really to help the user focus on apps. So you're gonna find a simpler design that really accentuates apps and the focus is clearly on apps. So you have things like editorial content, just like you have on the iOS version of the App Store. And I don't know about you guys, but I really do enjoy reading the editorial content that the App Store team puts out on iOS. And a similar approach has been taken here with the redesigned Mac App Store. But Apple didn't take the lazy approach and try to just port the iOS App Store over to the Mac. No, this is created with the Mac in mind and with the types of apps that run on a Mac in mind. So you have different sections like Discover. Uh, so you can discover new applications. You have video previews that automatically play there, which is really nice. And then you have different sections for creation or for work or a section dedicated to games under the play section. And again, you have those auto playing video previews, which is really cool. So you can kind of get an idea of what the game is like. And then you have a developer section for developers. You have categories, so it breaks down all the various categories by popularity. So you have top paid, top free, and you even have some editorial content in there. You have updates, of course, and then you also have your previously purchased content as well. So the Mac App Store, huge redesign, so much better than the previous Mac App Store. Apple has also beefed up privacy and security functionality within Mac OS Mojave. For instance, in preferences under security and privacy, now apps will need to request access to the camera and to the microphone, just like on iOS. And apps will also need your permission to access things like the mail database or messages history before they're able to. And it doesn't stop there. There's also enhanced privacy to help prevent fingerprinting from advertisers. And there's also a duplicate password finder baked right into Safari preferences so you can find reused passwords across multiple websites and address those accordingly. There's also automatic strong passwords, which simplifies the process of creating strong passwords, storing strong passwords, and then autofilling those strong passwords. That's all done seamlessly within macOS Mojave, similar to how it's done on iOS 12. And finally, Favicon support in Safari tabs, my favorite new sleeper feature in macOS Mojave. Just go to Safari preferences, click on tabs, 
select show website icons in tabs and there, look at that glorious folks, favicons in your tabs for a quick identification. You could also add emoji to the mail app with a new emoji shortcut button. You just click the emoji button and you can quickly add your emoji to your email. And enhanced Siri request. Hey there, turn off the Luxo lamp. Okay, the Luxo lamp is off. So you get really handy features like HomeKit control directly from Siri. Hey there, turn on the Luxo lamp. Okay, the Luxo lamp is on. And there's other advanced functionality to be found, such as the ability to ask Siri to show you passwords for specific websites. Hey there, show me my password for lens rentals. And it opens up Safari preferences directly to the password section and shows you your password. And there's more new Siri features to be found as well. And as you probably noticed, there are several new wallpapers found in macOS Mojave, including the two dynamic wallpapers, but you also have Mojave Day, Mojave Night, Desert 1, Desert 2, Desert 3, Desert 4, and Desert 5, Desert 6, and Desert 7. I think I like Desert 1 the best, actually. Which one's your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments. And in Mojave, there's also a new way to facilitate software updates. These are system software updates, by the way, not app updates. So now you'll find a special software update section in System Preferences. You just click that, and there is how you check for system updates. So ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our initial look at macOS Mojave. But as a reminder, I wanted to thank our friends over at Mac Paul, sponsor of this video. Clean My Mac 10 is a great way to keep your Mac running at optimal performance. For someone like me who works with video, it's especially useful for quickly identifying large files and getting rid of those with ease. Click the link down below in the description to visit cleanmymac.com and try it out today. So ladies and gentlemen, what are your favorite new features in macOS Mojave? Let me know down below in the comments section. Also, if you appreciate this video, please leave us a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.